After all this time, now you come to visit me, brother. Why? To mock. I need your help. But I wish I could trust you. If you did, you'd be the fool I always took you for. <laughs> Now, don't be picking on the Norse God of Thunder. You know, he's my people. Come on now. Um, hey, Mr. Wood. Uh, this is a lecture on robber barons, okay? Or captains of industry, depending on who you talk to. Um, yeah, I, I still need to see the Thor movie, so shh, no spoilers. Okay. Um, the lecture today, the reason I kind of showed um, Thor first, they're gods, right? Um, not that they think they are. They are gods. Um, but robber barons think that they are gods, okay? They're like, you know, I can do whatever I want because I got the cha-ching to make it happen, right? Um, yeah, that's one. That's a robber baron right there, okay? Um, but uh, the term robber baron, okay, a lot of people believe that's a myth. Uh, these guys really didn't exist. Um, but it was used to kind of attack um, businessmen who used to, you know, questionable practices in their in their business model. Um, it's kind of like it combines robber, which is a criminal, right? That's a robber right there. Um, combined with a baron. A baron is someone who has an illegitimate aristocracy, which means he's not really king. He's not really, you know, lord. He's a baron. It's kind of taking it. So you're a criminal lord, right? Um, kind of like Bane. Huh. Um, no, um, a robber baron is someone who basically takes control in a, in a way that's somewhat shady. Um, okay. Um, now, the term captains of industry is one I want you to think about as well. Um, when it kind of describes a business leader that amasses a personal fortune, that positively helps the country in some way. Um, okay, because we're going to talk about a few today that um, did some things that were a good way, did some things that were a bad way. Okay. The first guy I want to talk to you about is... That dude, okay? That's Cornelius Vanderbilt, okay? Um, they also called him the Commodore, right? Um, basically, he made his money um, in steamships, trading, eventually railroads. He was the first original railroad tycoon. Um, so they even, you know, the Erie Railroad was one of his big things. They used to have races to say he was awesome. Um, he won all of them, of course. Uh, but... Um, Cornelius Vanderbilt has some, I guess, North Carolina ties. Um, his grandson built the Biltmore State. Um, if you think of his name, Van Der Bilt was the way it was originally when he came across. Um, so the Biltmore State was his grandson. Um, also, he donated a large chunk of his money before he passed away to, um, to Vanderbilt University. It was named after him. And their mascot is the Commodores. So if you didn't know why, now you do because, hey, they're named after old Uncle Cornelius. Okay? Um, but yeah, Cornelius was a really rude man. He, something happened to him one time, and a guy tried to hone in on his railroad stuff. He was like, don't worry. The court system is too slow. I'm not going to sue you. I'm going to ruin you. <sighs> Okay. Yeah, that was his big thing. He was like, dealt with threats, and no one threatened the Commodore because the Commodore always won. Okay. Uh oh. Guess what day it is? Guess what day it is? Huh? Anybody? Julie. Hey, guess what day it is? Oh, come on. I know you can hear me. Mike, 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 Mike. What day is it, Mike? <laughs> Leslie, guess what today is? It's hump day. Woo hoo! Ronnie, how happy are folks who save hundreds of dollars switching the Geico? I'd say happier than a camel on Wednesday. Get happy. Get Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. Another one I want to talk to you about is John D. Rockefeller. Rockefeller was a guy who started Standard Oil. Okay, Basically, he had a monopoly on all oil producers. Um, there was... It was an old cartoon where it had this thing and all these tentacles going on. And, you know, basically squeezing oil dry. Um, and he's also um, 
Rockefeller Plaza, 30 Rock, New York. You know, 30 Rock was a good show. Bring it back. Um, but yeah, Rockefeller was, he was, I guess, the king of the monopoly. He felt that horizontal integration, okay, right there. Horizontal integration meant that, you know, I'm going to own every producer of oil, okay? I'm going to buy you out or a hostile takeover, buy out, any of these words, where you, where you, you own everything or have merged with another firm that produces the same thing, okay? Think about it, like horizontal, vertical, horizontal, okay? Or um, I guess the goal of a horizontal, a horizontal um, integrated company uh, would be to consolidate like-minded companies and monopolize a whole industry. Like, hey, I produce oil. Gotcha. You're mine now. Um, which isn't bad. Um, Rockefeller was very miserly with his money. Um, all he did was give money to get other things. <laughs> The thing about the next guy I want to talk to you about, um, so you've got Vanderbilt, this is railroads and, and shipping. You've got Rockefeller that is talking about you know oil. Our next guy is steel, okay? Andrew Carnegie. Um, see, there he is. He's a nice looking guy, isn't he? <laughs> um, Andrew Carnegie came in you know, and basically revolutionized the steel industry. Um, using the Bessemer process and some other things to refine steel, the production of steel, made it very easy to um, basically give steel out to, to um, companies that wanted to build their, their skyscrapers or whatever. Um, but the difference with Carnegie, now you keep in mind, you've got, um, you got to make, don't want to cover my face here. <laughs> you've got Vanderbilt, who is railroads and shipping. You've got Rockefeller, that is oil and it's horizontal integration. Now you've got Carnegie who's steel. You don't want to beat somebody at the same game. So Carnegie goes with what's called the vertical integration, right? Right there, vertical integration. The way vertical integration works is that you own everything in the process of making your said product. You're not, you're not just owning the oil company. You're owning the raw materials, the, the, the manufacturing, the assembly, the distribution. You own the entire process from start to finish, okay? It's not so bad. It's different, right? It's different, but you got to make sure that you own the right things. So you're owning the process. Now, vertically integrated companies, you know, they supply chain and you're united through a common owner, right? Common owner. Andrew Carnegie is the common owner. Companies in a supply chain that are united by a common owner, right? It's like, you know, I'm trying to think of a, uh, one to talk about today. Um, Google. <laughs> Google or Microsoft. Um, they own lots of things in that vertical chain. They don't all make the same thing, but they're, they're united by a common owner looking for a common need. Now, Carnegie was a philanthropist. Before he died, he gave away just about every penny to the Carnegie Foundation. You know, he would be considered a captain of industry because not only did he make a crap ton of money making steel, but he gave it back. Rockefeller? Uh-uh. Mine. Nom, nom, nom. And that's, so that's the difference. So you're looking at Robert Barron versus captain of industry. You have to decide. Let's give thanks for an idea, a grand idea called America. The idea that if you work hard, if you have a dream, if you work with your neighbors, you can do most anything. This led to other ideas like liberty and rock and roll, to free markets, free enterprise, and free refills. It put a man on the moon and a phone in your pocket. Our country's gone through a lot over the centuries and a half. But this idea isn't fragile. When times get tough, it rallies us as one. Every day, more people believe in the American idea. And when they do, the dream comes true. We're grateful to be a part of it. The next thing I want to talk to you about is J.P. Morgan. J.P. Morgan, if you, you probably have heard Morgan Chase, Chase Morgan, J.P. Morgan, you know, that's still around today. Um, 
what J.P. Morgan did, J. Pierpont Morgan, I just wanted to say Pierpont, it's his middle name, um, was a banker. And he's like, hmm, all of these guys making all of this money, they got to have a place to put it. And I could probably sell that. So he became like a credit company. Um, they had to lend money for large corporations. They didn't have that kind of money on hand. So he became the first investment banker. Cha-ching! A lot of money in investment banking. Okay. So right now you've got, of the main ones, okay, you've got Rockefeller, who is oil, horizontal integration, which is everything in the line. You've got Carnegie, vertical integration, everything from the start to finish of a product. You've got Vanderbilt, who basically is nom, 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 give me everything in railroad and steam building. Very, very ruthless individual. And then you've got J.P. Morgan is like, okay, I'm going to take advantage of everybody else making money and have them give a place to put it. So, so that's kind of where I wanted to leave you today. So cabinets of industry, that's what you need to know. Know the Rockefellers, the Carnegies, the Vanderbilts, and the Morgans. There are plenty of other ones, but those are the main ones I want you to focus on. Know what horizontal integration is. Know what vertical integration is. Know what a commodity chain. Commodity chain is where you basically put things together, like maritime shipping, which is on sea, and port terminal operations, which is kind of like a, a port where you can kind of land boats and ship-wise, or even um, trains, train terminals. Um, then you have inland modes, which you got like the, the um, covered wagon going to taking stuff away. And then you've got distribution centers, which are usually in your bigger city. So that's what's called a commodity chain, where you've got one thing, and it can go through all of these different places. Like what we're learning now with our, with our product. How are you going to market your invention? So is it going to be on water? Is it going to be on land? Is it going to be in a city? Is it going to be in a town? How are you going to do it? So commodity chain. Commodity chain. See, that's the word commodity. Okay, Commodity chain means you go, where is it going to be? Where is it going to be from start to finish? Okay, start to finish. That's kind of what um, Carney you wanted to control with vertical integration. So know these things, and um, I think I'll catch you on the flip side. Now, I gotta go, I gotta go watch Thor.